Hello everyone, welcome to your fifth and final video on Angular 2 modules. Before we get started, I just want to quickly talk about what happened in the previous video. In the previous video, I was referring to shared modules as common modules. That terminology is not correct. They have, um, Angular has in fact changed it since I uh, looked into how to do shared modules. Um, and we named it from common module to shared module. The reason for that is one of their modules happens to be called the common module, and inside of that module contains the directive for NGF and a few other little bits and pieces. So they've gone with the concept of a shared module now. So if you go back and watch my previous video, uh, I've gone, I just think of everything, everywhere I say the word common change it to shared and you'll be fine. It will still work as intended. Now in saying that, I've gone in and updated the code to already have a shared folder here now instead of a common folder. And I've replaced everywhere where I needed to make the fixes. So that's what I just wanted to say about that last video. Now getting into this video, we're going to talk about eager loading and lazy loading modules. And what does that do for us? Well, to start off with, we'll talk about eager loading first. So what eager loading is, is that all the files necessary to run your application, like for all the routes, such as the team's route and the player's route and all the routes that we built, right? They are loaded ahead of time, they're compressed and they're put into a particular file. Like, so if I show you right now, if I go to sources in the developer tools, if I go to sources, I look at main.bundle, you're going to see a whole bunch of webpack stuff at the moment. I might just expand this a little bit. It gets a little bigger. But you're going to see a massive load of stuff here, right? It's not going to make much sense to you, but Angular 2 knows how to interpret it and how to use it now if you do a search inside of here and you look for something called teams module you'll see halfway probably about i think it's about halfway down you'll see that it starts to refer to a teams module in here and if i keep going through eventually you're going to hit a variable called teams module and basically this is all this is using all the decorate stuff you don't expect to understand all this stuff right here, but what basically what I'm saying is that the Teams module code which you had has all been included in this one compressed file, this main.bundle, right? So that's what eager loading does for you. So if I go now into my source code, for example, and I'm now I'm not going to eagerly load anymore. In fact, I'm not going to load it at all at this stage. So if I come into the app module and I say... I'm going to remove the reference of Teams module, like so, and save. And then I'll let my terminal come in and rebuild that. Right. So well, now I've got not found works because we don't have reference to Team anymore. If I, and even if I come here, I'll even go to this main screen right so it used to be a reference to teams in here but if i now go and try to search for it it's all commented out you can see the line right there where i've commented out that's the only reference inside the javascript code that mentions anything about teams module and if i actually remove it entirely so if i come in here and actually delete this and i delete that and let it compile again You'll see, in fact, Teams module is not referenced at all. So you now, if I go to Teams module, it's zero of zero results. There's nothing in there. Now the players module is still in there because I didn't, I didn't pull that out. So you'll see it's still in here, right? So you're like, okay. So what is that doing? Well, eager layer here time is basically letting it all compress into the one file, and it's available instantly, right? The issue with that is that if you have like 120 modules 
then it's going to take a bit of time for this this file to be um, loaded into the into the system. Then you get things like this using CDNs and all these other bits and pieces, but out of the box, you know, if we were to have a hundred modules, this file could be very big very quickly. And if, in fact, if you look at it right now, it's already massively big. Like we're talking, you know, it looks like it's going to be about. I don't know how many lines of code, but it'd be probably over a hundred lines, hundred thousand lines, but maybe not. There you go, sixty nine thousand lines of code, right? Now, so as a reference to team here, which is interesting. Uh, but basically, you've got that many lines of code, right? And in fact, it still has a reference to the mock terms as well. Oh, because they're inside the shared library. That's right. I remember we moved that to the shared library. That's how it knows about this, uh, which is fine. That's okay. Um, so moving on. Now that, that's called Eagle When we put the put the stuff inside of our module, and we we import it in here. That's always going to be referred to as eagerly loading in a module. So what is lazy loading? Well, lazy loading is basically when you want to get the data that was in here but you want to load it at a later date because you don't need it straight away. So if you look by default, we come to this page, we don't require team information at this point. You know, unless, until we click on this, and then we do. And that's the only thing I've added too. I've added a route, I've added a, a little, um, little bit of HTML that goes to the team's route. Um, just have to have a quick look at that. I've added that to the app.compare.html, which is basically this router link is what it's referred to. So you just go a router link equals to the, the slash the name of the route, and then it's just a normal link. And then the outlet's above it. Anyway, I just added that in, I hadn't taken that out. So you can see right now, we can't get to the team. So how do we load this in lazily? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to go to the app.routing.ts file because now we're going to be loading the module as we click on a route. So in order to do that, we need to go to the app routing TS and we're going to create the team's route in here. So instead of it being that module like it was before, we need to include it in here again. So we go path, it's, but instead of just saying teams in this case, well, actually, no, we do do that still. But instead of going component, because we don't want to, we can't use the component because we haven't got it as part of the, um, we haven't got it as part of the module anymore, but we still want to use the module, we have to dynamically load it here. So how you do that, how you load the module dynamically, is you use this property called load children. And basically, after that, what you put in here is the location of where the module is in your source code. So I've got it in apps, teams, teams dot module. That's the module file. And then you, you hit on the end with a hash, the name of the module. So in our case, it happens to be called teams module, right? And that's it. So if I add this in, I can now loading the teams module from the teams.module file using a route. Now the one other change you need to make because of the fact now that we're loading this in dynamically, you have to go up to the routing file for teams and you need to change the path here to blank. And you're probably asking, well, why do we have to do that? Well, the reason why you have to do that now is because this is part basically an entry level route now so you've come into here you've called the module directly so angular from the angular's point of view it now says oh okay so any routes that we build from here or from this file now become essentially not quite the root but kind of like you're accessing it from from the team's url so if this is called teams 3 it'd be teams 3 slash then whatever the the route would be uh, it's hard to explain, I know. I'm not sure why they did it that way, but they just did. Okay, so basically you have to blank that out. So now if I go back to the code, you can see 
I go back to the normal page. Once again, you'll see if I come to main dot bundle, right? I come into main dot bundle. I come down to teams module. The only reference you'll see in the code is the routing to teams module, right? However, in fact, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this and then come back here and I'm going to refresh this. And then I'm going to reopen the developer toolbar. Okay. So you've got that URL. That's the only reference to Teams, the Teams module. However, what's been loaded is this zero dot chunk. Now what this zero dot chunk is, is basically it's the module that we just loaded in. Now, my opinion is this shouldn't have loaded now. It should have loaded later. Uh, I'm just trying to work out why this has happened because by rights, oh, okay, wait, I need to take out something. I'll take, I've gone one step ahead with my code here. I thought I took this out. All right, forget what I had there. So basically I've got route four root routes as, as usual. So now if I run this again, okay, now I'm not getting that, that extra file. So now literally, oh wait, no, it's come back again. Right, I remember. Guys, when you have issues like this, um, sometimes it's better to stop um, the Angular CLI and run it again uh, because when it comes to Ray, it's still get, I think this Angular CLI still gets a little confused with when it actually compiles it or executes it because it's not always doing the right thing. But if I run this now, if I run it again, it shouldn't load that chunk file. I want to get to what that chunk file is in, in a little bit. It's going to take a little bit to load here. Did you serve? Yep, here we go. Right. So as you can see here, it's loaded. We've got this zero.chunk.js file, right? That's basically gonna hold the module information for Teams. Now, the one thing I want to show, which is why it's annoying right now, I'll close this down again, and I'll refresh this page, right? If I come back out to the develop tools, now you can see there's no chunk file, right? So there's no way to pull down the, t the team's module hasn't been pulled down yet. So this knows nothing about team information. However, if I go to the network tab and now I click on go to teams page right here, you'll see this zero dot chunk file was loaded into the um, browser. And as a result, the teams page is loaded again. So what's this zero dot chunk file? Well, zero dot chunk is basically uh, it's an eight, basically it's all the module information for teams and even it has things like how to export um, the components and all other stuff pretty much the information that was in the original um, source file they just pulled it out and then put it into a chunk file and loaded it when it's necessary right and, and that's cool right you like if you're just going to teams or if you're, you're not interested in loading team information, then it's good to have it in a separate file and not have it in part of your main file. However, if you know for a fact that Teams is going to be accessed quite frequently, right, but still shouldn't be as part of the original startup, so you shouldn't have to wait for a massive JS file to load, you want everything else to, to load after the fact, so that you want this chunk file to still be loaded, but you want it to be loaded after the page has been loaded. So at the moment, if you were to leave it in the bundle, the bundle has to be processed completely before the page would load with the player's information, right? So we took out the team module. 
that saved us a little bit of extra time in loading the page because we didn't have to process that team module code. But now what we want to do is when we click on this, we don't want there to be a massive delay. Now, it's not obvious when I go through um, from my local machine that there's a delay, but it is requesting a new file, right? So as long as it's requesting a new file, there's going to be a slight delay before it can actually get that file, load on you into your browser, and then execute the code. <coughs> so what you can do is if you want this file to be separate but still um, come loaded even after the original screen's loaded so that we don't get a delay at all once we click on that link, you can go back to your code and up it when you're importing the router module, you can also import something called uh, basically the preload settings which in our case we want the preload or modules one now, there's ones for no preload uh, there's all these other kinds of options that are there but for this example <coughs> because we don't have um, any more than the teams module that we're going to be loading dynamically we can use preload or modules and this is the issue I was having before when I was saying, oh, that file shouldn't be coming through yet. It was because I had this preload all module set up already, but I shouldn't have. So now we come down, so we've, we've loaded it in from the router. And now as part of the for root method, there's an extra option here for, um, for handling the routes, which takes an object. And inside that object, we have a property that we can set called preloading strategy, like so. And then as part of our preloading strategy, we're actually going to pass in the preloading, uh, preload all modules class, all right? So now what we're saying here is that even though I want to have, I want the teams module to be loaded separately from everything else, and I want it to be loaded dynamically through this path here. I'm going to still, even though the page is loaded, I'm still going to go fetch it after the fact. So that when somebody does click on the Teams link, there will be no delay. That's essentially what we're doing here when we say I want to preload everything. We're not stopping it from being rendered, you know, because that one file needs to be scanned. But we're, we're still getting the information after the fact. And we're going to process it behind the scenes so that when somebody clicks on it, they'll be it'll come up straight away. That's essentially what's happening here. So now, if I come in and I close this again because I don't want this to be confusing, and I go refresh, right? So I've refreshed the page. So now we should see this zero dot chunk file straight away, along with all the rest of the other files. And now you can see it. So you've got the main dot bundle. And you've got the zero dot chunk, right? That's come with it. The zero dot chunk is the team module, as I mentioned. The main dot bundle is all the modules that have been loaded eagerly are in here. And that's a lazy version. And so if you had another module that was lazy loaded, it would be called one dot chunk. And then you know, another one would be two dot chunk and so on and so forth, right? That's how lazy loaded files go. Now, just to show you that it actually does get loaded along with everything else. I'll refresh this page and you can see everything's there and also zero dot chunk is now loaded as well. So when I click here, right, you'll see nothing gets loaded. Click and nothing gets loaded and the content changed to teams. So that's pretty much it for eager and lazy loading. I hope that made sense to you. It might take you a couple of goes to get an understanding of what it does. But basically, at the end of the day, it's just a matter of loading uh, modules in dynamically when you may not necessarily need them up front. You know, and eager loading is obviously you include everything that you need straight away for the first screen, essentially. So, say for the players, uh, for the root, we kind of need the players' information straight away. If I was to... Um, not eager to load that, there would be a, a lot longer of a delay because we'd have to make another fetch to get another chunk to pull that in. 
And I could show that, but I'm not going to. If you want to try that yourself, great. But that's all I'm going to do for this video. And thank you guys for listening. And in the next video, I'll probably look at uh, just running app components. Um, the only other thing that I haven't um, spoken about in terms of modules is how to export one for multiple applications. I'm probably not going to do that because if you're really interested in that, you can just look it up. It's probably not that difficult. In fact, I don't know off the top of my head how to do that yet. So um, I haven't been in a position to do that. So thank you everyone for listening and I'll see you next time.